Hello, my name is Chatelier, and welcome back to another episode of the Supreme Ruler Ultimate Tutorial Series, so with just the basics of the game. So, what we're gonna do today is go through the military. And we've got quite a bit to go through, so we're gonna try to be somewhat quick. So first of all, these two buttons here, the Defense Production and Defense, are the ones that we'll be going through. So first of all, in the Defense Production, we can see how many units we got reserved. We can see that we have unused build capacity, then we can see how many units we got deployed, then uh, we can select through all these to see, all, right, so that's the land units, then air units we got different numbers, and we also have unused build capacity, and say for naval, and we don't have any missile building capacity, but that's the four different branches of uh, stuff that you can build. Then you can see that we got 0 out of 6 uh, of the land production, for example, building, and 0 pending. And then, uh, as usual, there's the mini set controls here. We can see that we our unit production currently takes uh, 13,000 per day, which is not all that much, really, since we're not really producing anything other than one ship, if I'm not mistaken. Then we got the preparedness, which isn't costing anything. Military salaries, if you improve salaries, then the loyalty of your military will be higher and the effectiveness will be slightly higher. And at the same time, maintenance and training will increase your efficiency for the military a fair bit. So you, if you're planning on fighting a lot of wars, or if you plan on being a dictatorship, you might want to keep your military rather happy so that they don't do a coup. And then there's the control for the automated control of units, so initiative for land units is currently on low. I, there's, uh, it goes from full to none. And basically full, it does pretty much everything on its own. High, it does most of the things on its own, like it does some attacking if you're at war. It reshuffles the troops, sends them to repair and so forth. Then there's the medium, which does a little bit attacking and relocating troops and sending to repair, and a little bit of scouting as such. And low, it does a bit of a scouting, but doesn't really attack. And then none, you'll have the total control. And same goes for air con control and naval control. Then you can lock the military or the minister from military spending, as well as uh, garrison control. And garrisons. Uh, are some that will, for example, if you select a place, you can see the. Well, actually, I think this is better way to show it. So these grayed out figures over here is the garrison. So you can have up to I think seven or eight, seven in uh, per city, or a hex anyway. So you can put in quite a strong garrison in there if you want to. You can do that manually, or you can let the AI deal with that. I usually let the AI deal with that myself. But anyway, then there's the production. You can see all the designs that you have currently available that are not obsolete. And for example, if we wanted to, we could build a couple of La, La Marinas, which is effectively marines. Not sure, we'll put that or one of those into production. And... Uh, then, for example, we could build a tank, although this is not very good tank, so maybe a recon? We'll build a recon cavalry, it's not very good either, but it will do. Then artillery, and over here, the dots under these units means that how good or up-to-date it is for the time period, so I think we're gonna go with these. If you hover over, you can see some of the stats, and the most important is the bottom row of those, uh, so it does a decent bit of damage and has a certain range. We're gonna build two of those, and then maybe air defense. Well, no, we don't really need air defense right now, do we? So rather I'll build two trucks, and that's gonna fill in the production queue. Then you can do auto-build stuff. Currently the missile auto-build is on, but Clicking that will make it on for everything else as well, or like different branches if you want to. Then for if it's automated, you can set up to build either offensive 
balance or defensive stuff, depending on your situation. And then you can make sure that the quality is either... Or you can either go with quality or quantity or balance between those two. So if you just want to pump out a ton of troops, then you can easily just let the AI do the production and put it on quantity. Or if you just want to get the best units that you can, then quality is probably the best idea. We're going to deselect those. Actually, over here you can see different launch platforms for missiles and target types. Which, well, we don't have any missile design, so we don't really need to worry about that. But the same goes for producing aircraft designs and navy. You just select the category and then you select the one that you want to build and so forth. Then over here you can see the alert conditions and currently the it's elevated. Efficiency bonus is 14%, build speed bonus is currently 0%. You can select unit pathing, which, for example, uh, if you want uh, to shoot at buildings, or not buildings, uh, troops that go through your lands, that you can select that, and then uh, you can allow your air units to go over neutral regions if you want to. That will save sometimes range, but it will also give the enemy some casus belly against you and same for merger marine and then you can use trail rail transports and then you can either select on and off nuclear and chemical weapons currently they are we don't actually have either one i don't think then there's the paddle zone controls which will actually show you in a little bit it's basically a region but not region because regions are technically the country so it's just smaller areas so you can control for example if you want AI to have control over your army especially if you're starting starting the game as a first timer so you probably want to let the AI deal with that it's a lot to master as a system so you can just let that for example if I want to have a lot of troops here in Milano we can just make sure that there's a uh, high priority for there and the force is probably defensive so that would then mean that the AI will start sending troops in there as a high priority and then uh, theater controls are pretty much the same except uh, there's also diplomatic focus which you can do and espionage for example if I want I can have at least a moderate focus for Western Europe with the spies, but of course we're not actually producing any spies, so it doesn't really have much of an effect. And both uh, with the battle zones and theater controls, you can maximize garrisons or clear or garrisons, rip, auto repair structures, or stop the auto repairs. And for example, in the battle zones, it can be useful, for example, when you clear out an area. And move, the front has moved beyond some area. You can then easily just repair everything in the battle zone, just so that because if they're currently fighting, then the structures will take damage. So you don't really want to repair stuff unless it's something very crucial, like a bridge or defensive structures and such during uh, fighting. But once it's uh, a bit peaceful. You can easily repair, assuming that you have either the money to buy the industrial goods or you have enough in uh, your stock. And then there's the buildings. Let's uh, quickly clear out the filters that you can build. Military complex is basically what all the military buildings are built around. And then, uh, except some like. Uh, Barracks and air bases and ports and such can be built as well. But for example, aircraft production requires an air base in the same hex to be able to work. Land production needs a barracks and naval production needs a seaport. And then there's missile production that just needs to be at the complex itself. But that's about it. You can uh, then activate stuff or deactivate stuff, uh, scrap stuff. 
and uh, let the AI to decide where to build more and so forth. And you can build more stuff through that. But that's the basic controls there. And I think uh, you can also select a certain production players. For example, if I want to build something specifically over here, so I'll select the hex, and then I'll select the units that I want to build over there, and then it will build them exactly there. So that's a good way if you want to specialize, for example, uh, build infantry closer to the front and then build the tanks a bit further away so you can send them wherever they're needed. For example, or something else. But those are most of the controls. You can also just see the region control here. Like, for example, currently the Allies uh, have a bit less influence on Western Europe than the Axis have. Then let's go to the defense itself. So, over here, first of all, we can see that we got 145,000 active personnel, which means that that's roughly the size of our deployed units. Then there's a reserve personnel, we got over 3.5 million, which is quite a bit. And over here, you can again filter the different branches. Not to missiles, but anything else than that you can filter to. Or you can just click filter to all branches. But now I think we're going to look at the land units. So you can see how many units you have selected. We currently have none. If we go to Ethiopia, we can easily select some units. For example, select those two. And now they are both selected. The way to select the units over here on the map is just you click on the hex and then you click on that. If there's multiple units and you want to select only some of them, control click and you can select whatever you want to select there. And it, the select units is basically just showing what's there in the hex itself. And then the highlighted ones are the ones that you have actually under your control right now. Or giving the orders. And of course here there are also cabinet controls but it's the same controls as on the other screen. And then, hold on, there's the unit orders, but since we don't have any selected, so let's select these infantry units to go through the different orders. But basically there's the move to, which is quite simply just move to the hex that you select. And then there's the patrol, which goes between your current position and the hex that you select. Load into means that you load in for example, a transport ship or lander if you have something like that, or maybe a supply truck if you, for example, if you want to move artillery quickly from one place to another. That is a, a way you can do it. Then attack unit is uh, you give a target, click on the target hex that has uh, enemy units, and you can then select for the troops to attack certain unit there. For example, if you want to give your anti-tank guns order to shoot at the enemy tanks in the neighboring hex you can do it that way so they don't waste the ammunition to just fire on randomly there then attack facility for example if you want your artillery to try to destroy a bridge or maybe a barracks that the enemy has uh, nearby you can do that then you can select escort for example if I wanted to escort one of those artilleries I select that then I right click and then I select the you need to escort. Now they're escorting that artillery. And if I move the artillery, then the infantry will follow. Right, and then there was a couple more on the list. So air transport is something, basically, you take the units to airfield, do the air transport, and they at least should be transported to the other airport that you want them to transfer, but I don't remember, I haven't been using that all that much, so I don't remember can you transfer every troop or just the like airborne stuff and do you need to have the transport planes there or not. It's been a long while, then sea transport is a bit similar, but it's from port to port, and you'll want to use, uh, or they will be using the merchant marine, so you don't need to have transports there. Then load unit is uh, like the load into, but from the other perspective. So for example, you can give the load unit command for a ship or that has a cargo capacity or a supply truck or such. 
than uh, repair. It's uh, quite, uh, quite easy to understand. It's just uh, you select a unit. If you want them to repair in a certain barracks, they will go there and repair. Or if you just want them to repair at the closest one, you'll select a unit, select the repair, and then click this give order to select a unit. And they'll just find the closest barracks and go there. Repair. Once they repair, they'll get back out from the barracks. Then reserve is a bit similar, they just go back to the reserve unit instead of the deployed unit. Then entrench, they'll dig into a hex and they'll get some defensive bonus and it's one way to get a lot of units in a single hex, that's basically the only way. Normally the max is 7 of a unit type in one hex, except I think Air units you can have more if you go air base in there. And then split unit is you can select one of these units and split unit. It will then split into two, just basically divide all the strength between the two, or the max strength. It will be on full strength at that point, but just halved. And then you can later on Instead of split unit, if you have them selected, they will have merge unit, and you can then merge them. It's fairly useful if you've got a lot of uh, land to cover, and you don't expect much in terms of enemies, because the split units won't be able to fight as much. But if you just need to capture a lot of land, then splitting the units can be a good idea. Then scrap unit is a bit like the repair, they just go to a barracks, and then they are destroyed and you get the military goods back out of them, not 100% but a certain portion. And then clear orders is just... It clears the orders that they have. And then that's already the... Basically committing an order to units that doesn't really need to have a target hex. Then there's the formation move. You can press shift and it will automatically do that. For example, if you select these, when we press shift, it will keep the formation. If we don't use that, they will all go to the same place. If we press shift, it will try to keep the formation more or less. And then... Hold on, I don't remember that one. But anyway, then there's the cancel orders button again, and then you can create a battle group out of these. And if, for example, if we make these into a battle group, then you can see the units over here, and you can then select the units through that. And of course, then we can just remove the selected units from the battle group. Then, there's the individual rules of engagement. For example, if you want to, you can give certain units, different orders, and over here, for example, you can select the speed, if you want the units to, it's mostly for the AI control, though, at least to some degree, or well, the automation, at least, of the movement and such, but yeah, you can have them different speed, you can lock them from minister control, for example, if you want to make sure that you have some elite tanks, for example, and you want to control those yourself. You can make sure that the minister doesn't control those, but you can then have the minister or the AI control most of your units, just not those units that you individually select. And then you, there's a routing options. So are the quickest, direct, normal, or cautious? Then opportunity fire. You can either attack only the targets that you've given to your units or fire anything. And then initiative goes from high to none. Then approach, you can either capture land or not capture land. For example, if you want to sneak some units through a certain area, then you can make sure that they don't actually capture the land, and then you'll be able to move through. But there's a, there's a trick there, because so if you don't capture the land, you won't be able to get supplies in there, which can be a bit tricky. So normally you'll probably just want to have the regular approach. Then contact options, you can either have pursue, engage or avoid. 
the missile exceptions, well, we don't have missile capacity on the infantry here, so that is uh, not available. Then loss tol tolerance, for example, if we want to have certain units like artillery, that once they take a little bit losses, then they retreat. You can set them to low or none, technically, but low is probably the better option. And then you can uh, either accept changes or not accept changes for the global. And if you don't have a unit selected, you can then do the same but for, for global units or every unit. Then let's uh, go through the thing. You can filter unit selection to I actually haven't gone through this. I don't think... Oh, anyway, there's uh, options you can experiment with them a little bit. But they do have a decent explanation what they do already. And there's missiles. So you, if you have a missile platform, then you can add in certain types of missiles in there manually or not. Or you can have it automated and so forth. You can unload all the missiles and so forth. And then there's again facility controls, you can build stuff, but it's mostly the same. There's a couple more things that have been, or you can build through here, but also if you just right click and build select military, it will have all the same. Which is probably a little bit faster at least. Just gonna take everything and make sure that they're not moving anywhere crazy and then the last thing that we didn't go through is the technical readout and there's quite a bit of information around here so for example you can see what sort of uh, class it is directly from that you can also see it down there and then they have the soft target symbol which means that they will take the soft damage or soft attack damage but we'll go get back to that in just a little bit so you can see the pattern level means how many active personnel it will require then you can see the weight which is 46 tons so you'll need something that has at least that much capacity to actually transport it then default strength country of origin movement type reaction time and cargo capacity and then there's a lot of symbols here for example if we select something else i do recall we have some engineers on this side over there, actually there it is, over here we can see a bit more, so it's still a soft target, it has amphibious, so it can go across the rivers, and then it has bridging, so if you give a bridging order, let's actually, yeah, there's uh, some other orders here for some units, for example bridging, if you select that and send it to a river, it will then be at the river hex and other units can go through it. It's gonna be a bit slow but they can go through it and they also have the construction so if you want to make sure that you're building stuff a bit faster like the buildings that you're constructing you can have some engineers there to help with that and it will speed it up a little bit and it will speed it not only in the hex that they're in but also like two hex radius or something like that so you don't need to have them in every hex if you're building in a large area and just have them dotted there and uh, the more engineers you have there the quicker it will build up to about 49% uh, production in the time if I remember correctly if you have like the max amount in a hex but also if we go back to the here there's the bridging then there's the demolition so you can order your engineers to demolition uh, for example a bridge if you have enemies attacking and it's the only bridge in nearby so you can just destroy the bridge and they won't be able to get across the bridge easily at least and then there's the engineer which means that they can do constructing as such then over here if we go through these there's a strength which is basically listed over there as well but it's a kind of value that you can compare different troops. Uh, if they have a higher strength, they are probably better. Then uh, this fuel, it's uh, how much fuel they can store or carry with them. 
and well, they move on, so they have zero. Then uh, supplies is how many tons of military goods they will be able to carry, and once they run out of supplies, then they'll need to get more. Then there's the missile capacity, which is zero for engineers. Then there's the profile, which I do believe means a kind of uh, how hard it is to hit them. I'm not completely sure about that. I'm pretty sure though that the manual will be sell uh, giving that information. Then there's the spotting, which means that how far they can actually see stuff without being, for example, on a hilltop or something, or mountain top. So six, uh, 70 kilometers means that they can see up to two hexes away from there, because uh, for every starting uh, 16, it will basically reveal the entire hex, and then because it's 17, it goes past the first 16 and so forth, so you can see up to two hexes away. They can't really spot uh, submarines or anything like that, so the precision spotting is zero. Combat time means uh, how long the uni can keep on fighting before it runs out of supplies and needs to rest a little bit. And then there's the move range, which means that how far they can basically move on open ground without running out of supplies entirely and 54 kilometers is not huge the speed is only three kilometers per hour there's uh especially later on you can get units that have a lot higher speed but three kilometers per hour is what you can expect from basic uh, infantry then there's the max missile size which is of course zero and the carrier capacity, since we're not a carrier, we don't have carrier capacity. Then there's the combat stats over here. Fortification attack, currently 7, which means mostly like uh, cities and defensive structures and such. You can damage them and do damage in units in those. Then there's a the soft attack, which is uh, against the infantry and such, or soft targets. Then a heart attack, of course, for heart targets. Then there's a uh, close attack, which is instead of uh, using uh, the soft or hard attack, if there's a uh, close combat area, there is actually a filter for that, which we can take a look in a moment to see where it's going to be close quarters attack. But generally speaking, forests and jungles and cities and so forth are close quarters attack or combat. So that is something to keep in mind. Then there's the different air heights, there's the close uh, air attack, mid air attack and high air attack. Then there's the surface attack which is basically just the ships. Then there's the different defenses for close defense, land def or ground defense, air defense and indirect defense. But those are basically the stuff there. Then there's the price to build and how long it takes, how much it's gonna take. Uh, military goods, how much is it gonna cost maintaining per year. Then there's the uranium required, which is mostly for the nuclear warheads. And then there's the which year it's uh, supposed to be researched. That's the quick uh, going through all the details here from the technical readout. But we went through the stats, we went through the controls more or less. So I think, uh, yeah, that's the... Well, I suppose I could show the important, like the high ground. If you put your artillery on a high ground or some scouts on a high ground, they can see a bit further away and then artillery can shoot further away and so forth. So keeping an eye on the high grounds can be useful. And then the close combat or low visibility means that you can't really see through them. And then the fighting in there is going to be a bit trickier. For example, if we... There's not much over there, but there's a lot of jungles here, for example. So moving through these, you won't be able to see much. It's going to be quite costly to fight through it. And another thing that I did not mention... Is uh, the... The supplies. They requ once your troops run out of supplies, 
then they'll need to be in an area that does actually have supplies and... hold on. Supply levels. You can see that if it's uh, on your color a little bit, you, you can... They can get supplies there, and depending how good the supply situation is, the faster they will get their share of supplies, assuming that you have any military goods in your stockpile. But at the same time, if you have... I think I did explain this in an earlier episode, but we'll go through it again. So if you have zero supplies on your hex and the enemy has uh, some supplies percentage, then you will lose the control over the hex to the enemy. So keeping a supply is very important for not only for fighting, but also for keeping control of the lands and... Uh, if your troops are with that or outside of the limit, then you can still use the supply trucks, for example, or transport helicopters and so forth to uh, supply your troops with this stuff. And basically, if... Uh, do we have a supply truck anywhere here? Go over here, there might be one. Not necessarily. But anyway, in the supply trucks, if they're not carrying anything, they will try to get as much supplies as they can in there. And then you can move them to the either the same hex or neighboring hex, and then it will supply the units in there. But they are very susceptible for enemy fire, so you might want to keep them safe. And one way to hinder your enemy is destroying their supply trucks. But yeah, supplies are very important. And the giving the AI control, especially early on, is uh, fairly easy way to get you like uh, learn the controls a little bit. So I do recommend doing that to some degree while you learn some other things. For example, how the economy works and such. I mean, even though I do have the tutorial, it's uh, probably not going to be all that useful, really. But I think that's uh, pretty much it for this basic tutorial. If I forgot something, then please let me know in the comments, and I'll either answer there, or I'll go through those uh, later on in the series, because the next episode is actually going to be gameplay, and we're going to start fighting here in Ethiopia. But that's actually going to be a different playlist, just to keep this uh, simple. And uh, at some point I might do a appendix episode, just if I forgot a lot of things. But anyway, other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.